it's time to put a little twist on things. Literally, I'm making cherry Danish twists and tropical fruit pinwheels. So for my tropical pinwheels, I've rolled out my dough into a rectangle and I'm gonna trim away the edges because now it's time to start adding a little polish to our pastries. And then to get a precise measurement, I draw notches at my four inch marks on each side. And this way, it's easier for me to cut more precise squares. Just kind of follow the lines. Now to make a pinwheel, you take your square of Danish pastry dough and you wanna cut incisions about an inch in from each corner. And then you take one corner in to the center and you do that for each of those angles. And look at that, you've got your pinwheel. Here we go, the pinwheels are done. You have to give them about 90 minutes to proof while I start on my cherry Danish twists. And this time I'll roll this into a 12 inch square. And then trim off the outside edges, just like I did the first round. To make the twists, you wanna cut this square into 12 long strips. So they're each about an inch across. To make the twist, you simply twist the length of the pastry and then you twist it around itself. Tuck the little end piece in and that is a textbook Danish twist. So just like the pinwheels, I'll set this aside covered to rise for about 90 minutes at room temperature. It's time to make the cherry filling. I love cherry danishes. I have a cup of frozen pitted cherries that I've thawed and what's really important is you want to drain them well. To help thicken it and sweeten it, I'm gonna add about half a cup of cherry jam. Gives it that perfect gloss and sweetness. There we go. After 90 minutes, look at how those twists and pinwheels have puffed right up. Before I start filling, I want to brush all of them with the egg wash, that single egg mixed with a couple tablespoons of cool water. And then before I brush the pinwheels, I want to make sure that they don't puff up too much in the middle. I need to make room for the tropical fruit filling I'm putting on top. So I just press right in the center of each one. And now I'll brush the tops of these. So a little tip, as you're filling your danishes, use the back of the spoon to press into it just to flatten that center to cozy in the fruit filling you're adding. Now these are ready for the oven. It takes a 375 oven. Keep in mind the tropical pinwheels, because they're not filled, they only take about 20 minutes. The cherry danishes, because they're filled, take an extra 10, so 30 minutes in total. Look at those. I pulled my pinwheels out 10 minutes sooner, and then I'll let the cherry danishes cool a little bit before that final layer of glaze. So to fill the tropical pinwheels, I wanna top them with an assortment of tropical fruits. But to get the fruits to stick, I wanna put a nice lemon curd underneath. I'll start by measuring six tablespoons of sugar into my pot. And I'll add to that a quarter cup of butter, get that heating on medium high. And while it's heating, to extract the flavor of the lemon, I'll grate in a little bit of zest. I have a single whole egg and a quarter cup of fresh lemon juice. To help thicken it, a quarter teaspoon of cornstarch.
So I whisk this together. And then I'll add it all at once to the melted butter. Now I'll keep whisking this on medium heat until it thickens up. There we go. But I do like to strain it. That way it's nice and smooth. And I'll cover it on the surface. That way I don't get condensation. I set it aside to cool and I have one that's already chilled. This is definitely something you can make ahead of time, even a couple of days ahead of time. I've got my lemon curd and then an assortment of tropical fruit. So first move is to put a little bit of that lemon curd in the center of each pinwheel. I think I'll start with mango in the background, kiwi, pineapple, and dragon fruit. Now don't worry if it's not sticking exactly in place because of course you always glaze your danishes and that'll be the finishing move. I'll bring over my cherry danishes that have now cooled and I'll glaze everything all together. So you can be quite generous. With the apricot glaze, you almost have the glaze drip off the brush. Oh, doesn't that look stunning? And I'll do the same for the cherry danish. So now you have a really good sense of the styles of danishes you can make. 